Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to solve problem 2.2 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now this problem states the following, it says show that the energy must exceed the minimum value of the potential for every normalizable solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. What is the classic analog to this statement? Blah blah blah. So they're even giving us a hint. So what we will do is that we will start with the Schrodinger equation and we will follow the hint that they give us. Um, so what we have is that, well, we have the Schrodinger equation minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi dx squared plus the potential times psi. This is equal to e psi. All right, just very lazy notation, not including the x dependences, which are, of course, implied. Now, let's isolate the second derivative and write it in terms of something times the wave function. All right. So why, what we do is we just isolate this on the left hand side and then we put everything to the right so we have uh, e minus v times psi and then we have minus 2m over h bar squared but let's get rid of the minus sign so we'll multiply it through so we get v minus e so we get v minus e okay now why did we did we do this like in this way well because that way we can compare the behavior of the second derivative with respect to the wave function because it is normalized by a bunch of just these quantities that will not be changing. Okay, and now what would happen in the case that we are asked in, in, in the problem, which is that the energy is smaller than the minimum value of the potential, right? So the energy is smaller than any possible value of the potential. Right, perhaps we have a potential right, that looks something like this. Right, we have, this is um, going to be x. This is going to be, well, the energy or the potential. Both of them are going to be measured uh, the same there. So let's say that our potential is something like this. I don't know. And our energy would be this, right? So the energy would be smaller than any possible value for the potential. So what this means is that if the potential is negative, for example, then we know that the energy is smaller than the smallest possible value of the potential. So that means that V minus E would be positive. But if the potential is positive, then V minus E, right, E being smaller than the smallest possible value of the potential, will always be positive. So regardless of what happens, this prefactor to the wave function is always positive. And what that means is that if the wave function is positive, then the second derivative will also be positive because this cannot change its sign. And in the other case, if the wave function is negative, so will be the second derivative. And well, what exactly does that imply? Why, what does that mean? Well, let's just sketch a quick graph. So let's just do a quick graph, our wave function as a function of x, okay? So let's say that the wave function is positive. That means that the second derivative is also positive. Now, what does the second derivative say? It basically says how your function will behave, right? How will it be changing? Well, it's going to be concave upwards, right? It's going to be something like this. And if the wave function is negative, right, it will be somewhere over here, right? This is the axis for the wave function. And it's going to be sloping downwards because its second derivative will be negative. Okay, so this is what it will look like. Now, look what happens as x goes to infinity or minus infinity, right? Our wave function is going to infinity or to minus infinity, depending on which case we are. But either way, it's very much not going to zero and it will never go to zero because it will never change signs, right? For this to go to zero, you would need something like this, but that would imply that there is some x in which you have a change of signs, but we know that that doesn't happen. The energy is smaller for every single x. So this is not possible. And why is that relevant? Because if our wave function is not going to zero, then when we integrate from minus infinity to infinity, right over our wave function, then this will go to infinity, right? It will be divergent and it will be non-normalizable. And that is precisely uh, why we get this condition, right? The energy must exceed the minimum value of the potential for every normalizable solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Right? There we go. This is the proof, right? This is this shows 
why that occurs. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.